Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers, on our father Adam, on our father Abraham, on Moses, on Jesus, on His mother the Blessed Virgin Mary, and on the last of them all, the Blessed Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings be upon them all. We greet you from this, our sitting room here in our home in the Caribbean island of Trinidad on this, the sixth day of the month of Shaban, with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, with a greeting of peace. And uh, we begin with this uh, prayer, the dua that our Prophet, Allah's blessings be upon him, used to recite every month of Rajab and every month of Shaban. Allahumma barik lana fi Rajabin wa Shaban wa barikna Ramadan. We don't know which of us who will live to see Ramadan, so we pray. All our kindly grant us blessings in the month of Rajab and in the month of Shaban and grant that we might live to see blessed Ramadan. Ramadan, of course, being the month for the Quran. You reserve this month exclusively for the Quran. I know you've been waiting for a long time now for me to comment on uh, the Russian military intervention in in Ukraine, the way there was a military intervention in Syria. It's quite the same. A military intervention in Syria and now a military intervention in Ukraine. And uh, uh, it's been now about 13, almost two weeks now that this uh, military intervention has been taking place and it's going to last for some time because there is no indication uh, that the Zionist uh, resistance in Ukraine is ever going to seek peace. They're not like, they're just like ISIS in Syria. They will fight until the very end, until you defeat them and you corner them, and still they will not give up. So there's no difference between the resistance in Ukraine, which is not all the Ukrainian people, it is the core which is resisting on behalf of the state of Israel. And uh, you've been waiting for me to comment on it. And I want to begin with this Arab proverb that I'd like you to memorize. I want to start with it and please remind me here to end with it as well. My daughter is here recording the video for me. This is the, the proverb. The caravan is moving on. And uh, the dogs keep on barking. Despite the dogs keep on barking, the caravan keeps on moving on. This caravan, this caravan led by Orthodox Christian Russia, is moving on. And no matter how much the dogs can keep on barking, no matter how many there may be, the caravan will keep on moving on. That's how I want to begin this talk. You cannot stop this caravan, not with your useless economic and monetary sanctions. That's foolishness. Economic and monetary sanctions are not only sinful, Disappro disapproved of by the Lord God, but eventually you will cut your nose to spite your face. It will rebound against you, and you, you will harm the one you are trying to harm, but you will also harm yourself. So this is not going to stop the caravan from moving on. Get that message clear in Ukraine. No matter what they do, they cannot stop this caravan from moving on. All the criticism that you level against Russia, do what you want, you cannot stop this caravan from moving on. That is the first point I want to make. The second point I want to make 
is that what do we, this is the reason why I have delayed offering comments so far because the background to what is happening in Ukraine, I've already explained it extensively. Uh, how many years ago, I can't count, maybe 2015, 2016, perhaps, when I was still in Malaysia. So that background you've already understood. I don't need to go back to it. What is important now, however, is that why Russia declared again and again and again and again we have no intention of invading Ukraine we have no intention we have the freedom to move our troops within our territory as we wish however Russia said we have a red line don't cross that red line and Russia warned again and again don't cross the red line our red line is that Ukraine must not become a member of NATO because security is something that is universal. Your security and my security are all in interconnected. There's mutuality in security. There's no isolation in security. And a Ukraine which is hostile to us, not like Finland, not like Sweden, not like Poland, which is militarily hostile and which is waging war on a people who are Russian speaking people who don't want to accept the color revolution, six billion dollars worth of a color revolution and all kind of snipers killing people and murdering people in order to bring regime change in Ukraine. 2040. Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you, you Zionists, who did what you did in 2014 with all your nakedness exposed. And these people said, we don't want to be a part of that. And because of that, in the Donbass region where people were loyal to the Orthodox Christian faith and who were Russian speaking, and for seven years you've been, you've been persecuting them, terrorizing them, you've been oppressing them with much the same oppression that there is in Palestine, no different, with much the same oppression that there is in Kashmir, no different, with much the same oppression that there is in Yemen, no difference. The difference here, however, is that the oppressed in Kashmir the oppressed in Yemen, they don't have a superpower like Russia nearby. And Allah has given an order in the Quran with which we begin. This is Allah's law. And our comment at the beginning of this address is that you can have whatever international law you have in your coin, but the moral law is the highest law and power must be used in the world to resist oppression and to liberate the oppressed. Shall I repeat that for the schoolboys? This is Allah's word, this is the Quran. Allah speaks in is it Surah to Anfal of the Quran and we will translate it for our Orthodox Christian brothers who I know are longing to listen to what I have to say. This is what the Lord God says in the Quran. He asks Ba'dauzu Billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem Wa ma lakub what's wrong with you? This is his words. These are his words. Wama lakum, what's wrong with you? He's talking to those who have the power to be able to resist the oppressor and to struggle by whatever means necessary to liberate the oppressed from oppression. Oh, if Malcolm was alive, Malcolm would be able to explain this verse of the Quran much more beautifully than I can. May Allah grant to Malcolm X a house in Jannah. Wama lakum, I mean, wama lakum, what's wrong with you? La tukatiluna fi sabilillah. Why don't you rise up and fight? Use whatever weapons you have to use. Use power to fight 
to liberate the oppressors, Mustad Afina mi Marijali when Nisai was will done. Men, women, children. Alladina Yakuluna Rabbana Akhrijna Min Hazihi al Kariati Vari mi Ahlua. Liberate us, O Allah. Get take us out of this place of oppression with wicked people. This is what Donbas was for seven long years. And now you're crying, crocodile tears? Huh? Don't you have any memory in your head? For seven years or more, these people have been suffering in Donbass. Why? Because they said, we resist, we reject your color revolution that you finance with some six billion US dollars, eh? With Zionist snipers killing people in order to bring about a color revolution in Ukraine, in order to change the government of Ukraine to get one that is favorable to Israel? Don't you have any shame in your heads? Because these people resisted that and they had the right to resist it. These people don't want to wage war on Russia, they are Russian speaking. And these people for seven years they were suffering and Russia showed incredible patience for seven years. Russia has the power to do something about it. We don't have the power to liberate Kashmir at this time. We don't have the power to liberate Palestine at this time. We don't have the power to liberate Yemen at this time, but we will have the power tomorrow tomorrow but today Russia has the power and Russia has been warning and warning and warning and warning don't cross the red line and when they did cross the red line Russia has intervened and praise be to Allah that Russia is acting on the basis of this verse of the Quran whether you like it or don't this is the last command in the Quran why don't you rise up and fight to liberate the oppressed who are crying, crying for help. Send someone to help us, send someone to liberate us. And this is what Russia did. This is what Russia did. So Russia is acting. You can take your international law and throw it in the garbage bin because the highest law is Allah's law. The highest law is the moral law. And the moral law requires you to build power to liberate the oppressed. Now then, my perception, now let's offer you my Islamic eschatological perception of the implications of what is now happening in Ukraine and Russia. Uh, and also remember, when I offer an opinion, I, I respect your intel intellect. I don't want you to accept my opinions um, casually, uncritically. I want you to refrain from accepting any opinion I express unless and until you're convinced that it is correct. This is the way my own teacher trained me, uh, my teacher Maulana, Dr. Muhammad Faddur Rahman Ansari Rahimahul, and he was not a graduate of these Islamic seminaries, they call them the Darul Ulum or the Jamia. He was not a product of that, neither he nor his teacher, Dr. Muhammad Iqbal. These were not those kind of people. And uh, he would train me this way to be an independent thinker. So I would go to him <laughs> and say to him, Molan, I don't agree with you. And he was 23, 24 years of age, like a green banana. And he would only smile, that's all. He would not attempt to convince me, <laughs> not at all. Never, he only would smile, that's all. And then three, four months later, I would go to him and say, Molana, now I agree with you. Now I agree with you because I would spend those months struggling and struggling and struggling to Allah, asking him to guide me until eventually I would understand. He said, 
I am not going to take you on my back and take you up the mountain. I'll teach you to climb the mountain yourself. That's what I'm trying to do with you, my students and my brothers, particularly in the Orthodox Christian world, who have been listening to me. So this is uh, the Quran. When I offer an interpretation of the Quran, then I can be right, I can be wrong, because only Allah, the Lord God, can confirm that an interpretation is correct. So no one can be adamant, I am correct. But when I explain the Quran, which is different from interpreting the Quran, if I am wrong, then tell me what is right. If not, if you still defer with me, then part from me. Please go your way and leave me alone. When it comes to explaining the Quran, not interpreting. If I'm wrong, then tell me what is right. Otherwise, go your way and leave me alone. Go your way and leave me alone. If I'm wrong, tell me what is right. So this is the Quran. I'm going to take a little time with you now to take the Quran and con connect it to what is happening in Ukraine and in the world. I hope China is listening because China is doing a lot of correct things, but China does not have the Quran. So if the Chinese were to listen to us, it's beneficial for that. The Russians are listening to what is in the Quran because nobody taught the Quran to Russia. The Ottomans never did it for 600 years. They only know how to wage war on Russia. Ottoman 600 years of war on Russia, they have a PhD in waging war on Russia. That's all they know to do. Nothing else, wage war on Russia. That's Ottoman history. But we are now reaching out the Quran to them as they never had it before in their lives. No one ever taught them the Quran this way as we are doing it now. And thanks to the internet, they are listening to us. So it's beneficial not only for the Orthodox Christian world, but China as well. Listen to what the Quran has to say. It benefits you, China. China is a proud civilization. And we know that China will not bend its knee to the oppressor. But still it's beneficial for China to listen to what the Quran has to say. The pagan Arabs, they didn't know what to deal, how to deal with a man from their own midst who grew up amongst them and who was so honest and trustworthy. They gave him the title, as I mean, the trustworthy. And then when this man reached the age of 40, he declared that I am a prophet like unto Moses, like unto Abraham. They knew about Moses, they knew about Abraham. Why? Because there was an important part of the Jewish world, la creme de la creme, right there in Arabia, in the Hejaz, close to the, the house of Allah in Mecca. They were there, the Jews were there, waiting because they knew that someone was coming. They knew that someone was coming, coming to this city called Yatrib. And they thought that maybe he's going to be the Messiah. So the Arabs knew about the Jews because they were there side by side in Medina, and this is Mecca. So what the Arabs did was to send a delegation to the rabbis in Yatrib. Yatrib is the old name. Yatrib is the name in the Quran. But after the death of the Prophet a decision was taken to call in the city Medina to Nabi or the city of the Prophet. So they sent this delegation to Yatrib to ask the rabbis. Rabbis, how can we tell whether he is indeed a Prophet? And the rabbi said, ask him these three questions which only a prophet can answer. No university can answer it. None. And one of the questions pertained to a great traveler who traveled to the two ends of the land. And when the Quran responded with an answer to the question, Allah says, they are question thee, O Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon thee, about Zul Karnain. Zul Karnain is someone or something. Zul Karnain is someone or something 
which happens twice in history, which impacts twice in history. Two people, two generations, two epochs, two eras. Karnain. Karn means a horn or a people, a generation. But the Quran has never used the word Karn to mean horn. So Karnain means two people, two generations, two ages, two epochs. And this is the response to the rabbis. And when the answer was delivered, the, to the Quran spoke about power, divinely ordained power, power that the Lord God gave. And this power rests on the foundations of fate. And this power is located at the beginning, the first garden, in the region of the Black Sea, Ainun Hamia, says the Quran. And uh, the, the eminent uh, commentator of the Quran, Ibn Kathir, identifies it as the Black Sea and so many others, including myself. So when power rests on the foundations of faith, and power emerges in the region of the Black Sea, then Allah asks, how will you use that power? This is the first card. And Zulkarnain replies, as Cyrus could not reply, and Alexander could not reply, and Darius could not reply, and Tom, Dick, and Harry could not reply, and so I have Never, I will never identify Zulkarnain with any historical personality. Would you kindly allow me to repeat, let the dogs stop barking? I do not identify Zulkarnain with any historical personality. Tell the dogs to stop barking. Stop it. I do not identify Zulkarnain with any historical personality. Not with Alexander, not with Cyrus, not with Darius, not with no anybody else out there. So we are not identifying Zulkarnain with any historical personality. So when power rested on the foundations of fate in the region of the Black Sea, this is how Zulkarnain replied when Allah asked, how are you going to use your power? And he said, I will use my power to resist the oppressors, to deal with those who are acting in a manner which is wicked. Oppression is wickedness. And I will teach them a lesson. And when I'm finished with them and they return to you, you will also punish them. I will punish them and you will punish them. And I will use power to assist those who have faith and to reward them for their righteousness. This is how power is used in the first current of the Karnain. Now then, there are two parallel versions of history going on here. Allah says, Wa makaru, wa makarallah, wallahu khairul makirin. So history is moving on two parallel tracks of a train. This side is Intelliku Irazilin Zi Salasi Shab. Proceed to a shadow. That's the Antichrist. That's the good Dajjal, which will emerge in three parts, which has three parts. And we identify that in the first part the world will witness Pax Britannica. And then in the second part, Pax Americana, with even more oppression. And then in the third and last part, for the shortest period of time, a day like a week, Pax Judaica. That is one track of history. History moving in that direction, Womakaru. And now this is the second one, Womakar Allah, that there is going to be a first car and then there will be a second karn, okay? So in the first karn, when you see power resting on the foundations of fate, 
in the region of the Black Sea, you know this is the first current and power is going to be used to resist the oppressor, to punish him. And the power will be used to liberate the oppressed and power will be used to reward those who have faith and who are righteous in conduct. When will the second current come? Because between the first and the second current, Zulkarnain builds the barrier and he checks mate Gog and Magog. And of course, uh, excuse me, I'm old and I'm tired. And the sheep and the cattle and the goats and camels, they don't want to listen to me. I'm tired now, so just leave them alone. The Quran speaks about Gog and Magog, but they will not study the Quran. Leave them alone, yes. Leave them alone. The Quran speaks about Gog and Magog. And our Orthodox Christian brothers, I don't say friends, I say brothers. I am reaching the Quran out to you. The same Quran which says that those who follow Jesus, which of course are not those who follow, <laughs> following Santa Claus eh? with NATO, those who are following Jesus, this is what the Lord God is saying in the Quran. I am going to raise you to a position of power and a position of dominance against your enemies. This is what's happening in Ukraine now. And when I raise you to that power, position of power and dominance, you will remain there until the end of the world. Tell that to ISIS, go put it in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it, the Quran is saying. I'm going to raise you, those who follow Jesus, the followers of Jesus. I'm going to raise you. You are not a people who say a man can marry another man and get a marriage certificate, or a woman can marry another woman and get a marriage certificate. Throw that rubbish away in the drain. You who follow Jesus, you are going to be raised. This is the Quran to a position of dominance in the world over your enemies and you remain there until the end of the world. This is the Quran. And so now when we address the Orthodox Christians to take the Quran to you, this is a book which is friendly to you. So the Quran is speaking about a second age. In between the first and the second age, Gog and Magog are explained in the Quran. That in between the first age and the second age, the first card and the second card, you may have a view of Gog and Magog. Listen to what the Quran has to say. Zulkarnain is able to build a barrier in a pass in the Caucasus Mountains in Georgia, the Dariel Gorge. And because of this pass which is blocked with blocks of iron, Gog and Magog are contained behind the barrier. It's called checkmating in, um, in chess. That's what Zulkarnain did. He checkmated them. He didn't destroy them because only the Lord God can destroy them. He did, not, he did not destroy Gog and Magog because only the Lord God can destroy Gog and Magog. But he was able to checkmate them, contain them behind a barrier so they are now useless. They can't do anything. We are safe. The world is safe from them. That is what happened the first, after the first cut. And then came a moment in time when during the lifetime of Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him, Allah brought down that barrier, that dam, that dam, that, and Gog and Magog were released. And when they are released, the Arabs are the ones who are targeted most of all. Wailul lil Arab, said the Prophet. Go on to the Arabs. And this is what's happening now. The Arabs are being targeted most of all. This is Yemen. 
This is Egypt, this is Syria, this is Lebanon, <laughs> this is Iraq, this is all of these countries are suffering because Gog and Magog are attacking them. And so Gog and Magog, the Quran then goes on to say, when they are released from behind that barrier, then the world is going to see a people who were expelled from a town and then the town was destroyed and they were banned from ever returning to that town to reclaim it as their own. For 2,000 years they couldn't do it. When Gog and Magog are released, they will return these people to that town. Which town is it? Very easy to recognize. Our prophet said that Gog and Magog, when they are released, Eventually, the first of them will pass by the Sea of Galilee, going south to Jerusalem. And by the time the last of them pass by the Sea of Galilee, they said there used to be water here. So the Sea of Galilee is destined to run dry. And Gog and Gog are moving to Jerusalem. And when Jesus returns, and he has killed the Antichrist, it is in Jerusalem that Gog and Magog will surround him to kill him. And then he'll pray to the God, Lord God, and the Lord God will destroy Gog and Magog in Jerusalem. So Jerusalem is the city. So who are those who brought the Jews back to Jerusalem to reclaim it as their own 2,000 years after they were expelled and Jerusalem was destroyed? The answer it is those who control power in the modern West, and that includes the Vatican. That is Gog and Magog. I hope my Russian brothers are listening to what is in the Quran. Mm -hmm. And so now when you see power emerging one more time in the region of the Black Sea, and this power is resting on the foundations of faith because Russia is returning to her Orthodox Christian heart and the dogs can keep on barking. But this caravan will keep on moving. Russia is returning to her Orthodox Christian heart. And this is something which should bring joy into the heart of all the followers of Prophet Muhammad except those misguided people who were following the Ottoman Empire. The Ottomans knew nothing else but to wage war on Orthodox Christian Russia. When you see power returning to the region of the Black Sea, and that power is resting on the foundations of faith, and that power was responding to what Allah has ordered in the Quran. What's wrong with you? Why don't you fight in the way of Allah to liberate the oppressed? And that is what Russia is doing in Donbass. Russia could not intervene in Donbass alone. Because if Russia had done that, Gog and Magog would have come into the rest of Ukraine to checkmate Russia. So Russia had to take the whole of Ukraine in order to save Donbass. And Russia is willing to stop the war as soon as Ukraine is prepared to live in peace and security. And you cannot have security when you want to join NATO. You cannot have security when you're oppressing the people of Donbass. No, you cannot have security that way. As soon as they are prepared for peace and security, we can have a different world over there. Russia will stop fighting. So our first major comment is that we are now witnessing the emergence of the second Karn of Karnain in Surah al -Kaf. I may be the only voice in the world of Islam saying this. And so I ask you not to accept my view. No, until you are convinced that it is correct. But when you are convinced that this is correct, then let the dogs keep barking. This caravan will move. I have more to say on this subject, much more, much more. Uh, but this is enough for today. I don't want to take too much of your time. I want to remind you that the Quran has spoken about the Christian people who will one day be closest in love 
in love and affection for the followers of Prophet Muhammad And this is already happening in the world today. I hope and I pray that something can be done to reconcile the Christians and the Muslims in the Balkans. The Muslims of the Balkans, they made a very big mistake, very big mistake, very big mistake in supporting the Ottoman Empire in their wars against the Christians. These were bogus jihad. They even joined in the wars to fight against their brother Christians. And they're paying the price for it now because the Christians hate you for what you did. And they have every right to hate you for what you did. They have every right to hate you and despise you for what you did because you say you took Islam and Islam led you to support an oppressor who was oppressing the Christians. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. But you made a mistake and we make mistakes. So I hope you can recognize the mistake that you made. And uh, you can forgive the Christian brothers who are hostile to you because they had every justification to be hostile. And now because Allah says these same people are going to be closest in love and affection to believers, to Muslims. You don't want to be left behind by history. So you must reach out to them and try to bring fraternity between Christians and Muslims in the Balkans. I, I will be traveling after Ramadan. I'm going to come uh, to Greece and to Ma Albania and to Macedonia and to do whatever I can, inshallah, to try to bring reconciliation between Christians and Muslims. And remember that there is a great war which is coming. We can't avoid it. I want to speak about the sanctions in another lecture. There is a great war coming connected with the go mountain of gold, which is the petrodollar monetary system, which is going to collapse now. Hmm? I want to speak about what happens after the great war, the conquest of Constantinople. And when that conquest of Constantinople takes place, Turkey can't stop it. Don't try. You can't stop it. Yes. A Muslim army is going to conquer Constantinople. And when that happens, we return Hagia Sophia. Pakistan is now realizing they made a mistake when they were clapping. And they're celebrating that Hagia Sophia is once again a masjid. But now they realize their mistake in Pakistan. I couldn't find a single Pakistani who stood up in front of me to say, to justify Hagia Sophia becoming a masjid once again. Not even one. And we return Hagia Sophia to our Christian brothers. They can't say, this is news that the people of Greece, they bring tears to their hearts when they hear these words from me. They weep in their hearts when they hear these words. I'm coming to Greece and I'll tell it to you in your faces. We return Hagia Sophia to you. And then the fraternity, the reconciliation will take place between the world of Islam and the Orthodox Christian world. The caravan is moving on. El Kafila to Satathir. And the dogs can keep on barking. This caravan is moving on. Even though the dogs keep on barking. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.